taking Shiva Shakti in deep five breaths. Om Shiva Shakti Shiva Shakti Shiva Shakti Sarvasamharakarakaham 
ಸ್ವೀಶ್ವರು ಗುಣಾತೀತ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರೂಭ ಸನಾತನ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪ್ರಾಕೃತ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪರ ನಾನಾರೂಪವಿಧಾತ್ಮಕೇಶು ಯೀತಿ ತತ್ತೂಪ ಬಿಭರ್ಷಿ ಚ So in the previous class, we all perceived, felt, experienced Bhakti as Bhakti Denu, the evergreen cow, milch cow, which is oozing milk. with amruta the milk which is none other than sachidananda for ignorant jeevatmas it is very easy to lose this bhakti which is beyond emotion it is a supreme state of mind which is very easy to lose because out of ignorance many desires pop up many thoughts pop up easy to lose the focus faith passion and in no time we are drawn towards the worldly affair so shankaracharya is sharing his experience what he is going through in so many different ways in myriad forms he has experienced that bhakti that state of mind which is supreme and he's enjoying bhakti in so many different ways so that bhakti is making him go closer and closer to shiva shakti in such a way that he has come to the level where he is questioning shiva mm mm-hmm. jadata pashuta kalankita kutil charat ಮಹಿ ದೇವಸ್ತಿ ಯದಿ ರಾಜಮೌಲೆಶ್ಚನಿಂಗ್ ಓ ರಾಜಮೌಲೆ ರಾಜ ಮೌಲೆ ರಾಜ ಇಸ್ ಮೂನ್ ಮೌಲೆ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೂನ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕ್ರೌನ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಶಿವ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ರಾಜ ಮೌಲ ಚಂದ್ರ ಮೌಳಿ ರಾಜ ಮೌಳಿ ಹೇ ರಾಜ ಮೌಲೆ ಶಿವ ಜಡತ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನರ್ಟ್ pashuta being animalistic kalankita being impure kutila charatvam and also the movement is crooked nasti mai i don't have these things i don't have jadata the inertness or the senselessness idiocy pashuta 
the animalistic nature in me i don't have kalankita impurities i don't have kutira charatvam moving with crookedness cha nasti mai all these things are not there in me asti yadi if at all i have these characters bhavada bharanasya nasti kim patram am i not eligible to become bhavata bharanam your aabharana your ornament which you are wearing on your head so the seeker is attacking the place of chandra he wants to become that chandra what does it mean the seeker is indirectly telling chandra the moon has all these qualities jadata is the inertness or even the dullness the thin crescent moon it is not bright at all it is very dull pashuta the animalistic nature in him he is having in the full moon we do see the deer hair as the sh- shadow not only that even in his character once chandra was attracted towards the wife of his guru brahaspati which is very wrong so that animalistic nature is there in moon and you are holding deer also as one of the ornaments in your hand even that is perfect symbol of animal with all the qualities in it kalankita he is impure because he married all the stars the daughters of prajapati but he was very very partial only to rohini because of that he got curse from prajapati so being cursed and outcasted it means it there is impurity in him and then kutila charatvam kutila charatva is he keeps changing his behavior or his form so constantly and so quickly within 15 days he changes his form by being full moon to crescent moon to nothingness so it is a kind of kutila charatvam not only chandra you are having the tiger skin which is inert jadata and pashu you are holding and kalankita of course the moon is kalankita there is spots in moon and kutira charatva even snake it also moves zigzag it is not straight so in so many ways you are accommodating all these characters for having these four negative things i don't have but even if i have i am not eligible to be one of the ornaments on you just like you have purified all those impurities and you are making them as jewels am i not eligible for that he is asking so 
Nasti mai deva. I don't have. See how boldly he is telling. Nasti mai. An ignorant person, <clears throat> because he is viewing all these impurities like Kalankita, Jadata, Pashutva, and Kutila, Charatva, from the physical aspect, from the physical world aspect. He's, the seeker is claiming, I don't have it. Jadata, that inertness, dullness, I don't have. I'm a very bright person. I'm up all the time with so much of energy. Jadata is not there. Pashuta, I don't have that animalistic things because I use my wisdom. I'm not animal. I'm an intelligent human being. And then Kalankita. I don't have any impurity in my behavior. In society, I have a good stand. Everyone respects me. I am great. I don't have any impurities. And Kutila Charatva. I am not crooked. I don't even get the thoughts crooked or my actions are straightforward. I don't do any underhand business. I am a very, very straightforward person. So these are all the things which he is claiming I don't have. From the perspective of the world which he is living in. But in reality, every Jivatma has all these four. That is why he is telling, even, even if I have Yadi Asti, if at all I have, what does it mean? Jadata. A person, when he takes the body and the mind as himself, I am this body, I am this mind. That is how all jivatmas are living. When I say I am the body, body is inert. The mind, I am going, I, I want to feel like this. I am very angry. I am very hungry. All these things are coming as sentences because I am becoming one with that inert mind. Just because Shiva, the consciousness, is running through the body and the mind, it is working, it is living, and it is accommodating the consciousness to work through the body, through the mind. So, as a Jeevatma, I am that inert. Dull, ignorant, not knowing the reality. That I am not the body, I am not the mind. Pashuta. What is the difference between a human being and the animals? It is the wisdom, which is the intellect, which is giving him a special feature. Well developed intellect is making the animal as a human being. But are we using that yukti, the wisdom, all the time in our every action and every thought? Not at all. So I am leading Pashuta, the animalistic life when I'm not using that wisdom. Kalankita, impurity. The very big impurity is the first primary impurity what we are having is I am the mind, I am the body. From there itself, the impurity starts. 
So I'm not able to experience myself as Shiva, who is Chidananda, who is Vimala, Sarvavyabi. All these things are gone. I am that actually. But the mind is, has become impure by assuming the notion very strongly that I am the body, I am the mind. So, this seeker has understood his mistake, which he is telling in the beginning. All these impurities are not there in me. All these four negative things are not there in me. And in the second one, asti yadi, even if I have it, because he has realized, uh oh, there is a big mistake which I have done. Realizing that, he is telling, but still, am I not eligible to be on you? I want to be very close to you. Can't you have me as your ornament? Because all this moon, the tiger skin, snake, the deer, Agni, uh, Ganga water, all of them have become pure because of their close association with you. So, it is a very deep surrender with bhakti to Shiva. That Shiva consciousness is not somewhere there in a form. It is very much within. That Shiva who is within as Atma to that Shiva, the seeker is asking. The minute my mind, which is having all these negative qualities, which I have realized, when that turns towards Atma, it really wants to hang around, stay close to Shiva, who is consciousness within. So, indirectly to say, telling, I want to go within. I want to go within. I want to be close to Atma. For that, it is like a step. Bhakti is like the step which is taking us, uplifting us. <clears throat> mm. Arahasi, Rahasi, Swatantra Buddhya, Varivasi, Tum Sulabha, Prasanna Murti, Aganita Paladayaka, Prabhurme, Jagadadhiko, Hridi, Raja Shekharosti. So, when that surrender in bhakti has really entered the determination of the seeker, he is realizing, he is understanding this Rajashekhara. Rajashekhara means one who is having the crescent moon on whom I was eyeing. That Rajashekara is very much Jagadadiko. He is way beyond and above the whole manifestation as Jagad. He is beyond Jagadadiko. Rajashekara. Aganita Phaladayaka. One who gives n number of Vara or the fruit, phala, for all the karmas. Prabhu. And he is the Lord of all. Me hridi asti. He is very much in my heart. So, arahasi means 
the external worship. Arahasi varivasitum sulabaha. One can easily appeal, appease, worship that Prabhu, Shiva, easily through the external worship. A rahasi. Rahasi means secretively or within. Rahasi. A rahasi is external, public. That means what? As Murti Puja or as the world itself as Shiva. A rahasi, rahasi. Varivasitum sulabaha. Swatantra buddhya, not only that, even we can choose Swatantra buddhya. One can choose because he has the freedom to choose in what way he wants to worship, appease. Varivasitum sulabaha. It's easy, it is possible. Because Shiva consciousness is the very source of the very source of the whole manifestation. When he is everything and everywhere, how can anything be wrong? In whatever way I worship him. He is accepting it because he is all pervading. He is there outside. He is there within. He is everywhere. It is only I, the false I, which is making that difference. He is outside and he is within me because I am thinking I am the body. So I am bringing the concept or the notion of body and mind as a wall, as a ghatta, as a pot, as a jar. So because I am putting that around the Atma, I am making the difference. Arahasi, I mean Arahasi outside, Rahasi within. So it is Bhairanga Bhakti, Antaranga Bhakti. For both, he is available because he is everywhere. Swatantra Buddhya, that means he is given the choice also. There is no any particular thought that this is the way one has to worship him. No. He, Shankaracharya has already given us uh, the example of uh, Karnapa, isn't it? So, it is not the worshipping, the method of worshipping is not a set of any particular group of people. Shiva, the consciousness, is available to all, to the whole manifestation. And according to one's own buddhi, According to his wish, the deep wish, one can appease, one can get connected with Shiva. See how beautiful it is. When we really hit the very source or the primary source, which is Shiva Shakti for the whole manifestation, the mind becomes broadened. The range is expanded. When we become limited, following just one path, that is the only way. All other paths will not take you to that point. When we say that, we are limiting the goal as well as my own potential. So that is taken away in this shloka. So when it is arahasi, 
the bahiranga that means the external worship it is saguna brahman i am giving a form and i am trying to show my bhakti to that form where am i giving that form where am i seeing it where am i perceiving it where am i worshiping it it is in the mind right what i am seeing as the idol that seeing is happening within the worship which i am doing to him is also happening within but i am taking the help of the idol or the photo so when we do that bahiranga bhakti with saguna brahman slowly he gives the knowledge that the whole world is saguna brahman you can do swatantra buddhya you can see the tree as shiva river as shiva parvata as shiva all different people as shiva everywhere one can see shiva even though we they are all different different things this stone is shiva that mud is shiva everything is shiva 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 so external worship antaranga bhakti the internal worship how does it happen we realize shiva 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 in different forms but the essence is only one which is there in all forms so we go and take that essence for worshiping not the form but the essence in all the forms when i realize that the essence in all different different multiple forms is one and only one shiva he is very much within me too isn't it so that shiva essence i realized that is there in me too and and the whole world is not different because the essence is only one and the forms keep changing every moment so i will stick on to that essence that is antaranga bhakti the internal worship both are sulabha bari vasitum to appease him to appeal him it is easy and he is giving a free big freedom to interact with shiva get connected with shiva and make him happy him 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 where is he that is my own self i am that shiva agarnita phaladayaka he gives innumerable n number of phala if at all it is that consciousness which has to give the phala what else can give the phala even though there are different deities even those deities different devatas are also giving the phala because of the presence of that consciousness in them who is that consciousness shiva so it is the same consciousness who is using different devatas to distribute the phala krishna also says this in bhagavad gita so beautifully so he is the only one who is capable of giving any phala as consciousness agarnita phala ganita means which can be counted agarnita which cannot be counted so that many 
Phala. He gives. Dahe kaha. Where is he? He is not somewhere there. Up in the heaven. Me hridi asti. He is very much within my inner core. Hridi. Antakkarana. Won't it make us feel so complete, contented, and so self-confident when we realize that that power, Shiva Shakti, is very much my own self. We have to feel it. Antar Bhaishyata Sarvam Vyapya Nara Yana Sthitaha Inna Purusha Sutta. It's also telling the same. And his Prasanna Murti. Varivasitum Sulabha Prasanna Murti. That's also another big point. He being pleasant and tranquil. He is able to understand, recognize, feel, empathize with different kinds of bhakti, the worship, the application which we all put. They are in different levels, different ways. Because he is prasanna moti, he is very pleasant. So he is able to reciprocate by giving that many countless number of phala. How beautifully Shankaracharya has tied up the great chain. Chain from how the seeker should appease him. Don't have any inhibitions. There is Freedom. Because he is Prasanna Murti. Not only that, he is the only one who is capable of giving all this phala. And he is Raja Shekhara. That means he is the controller and ruler of the manifestation which is like Raja, the moon, which keeps going up and down full moon to new moon. That he is controlling and ruling. That Shiva is very much within me, within me. What else is needed? So he is really encouraging us to get into this Shiva. Path because consciousness is the source of everything. Jagadadhiko hridi. Jagadadhika. That's also another point. Because he is that Prasanna Murti, Raja Shekara, Shiva is Jagadadhika. He is beyond and above the whole manifestation. So if that Sakshi Bhava all controlling consciousness is within every one of us means what one has the capacity to be that shiva who is beyond jagadadika because that's what i am Is Sarva Vyapi, Antaryami, Paramashiva, who we are all carrying within us. Arudha Bhakti Guna Kunchita Bhava Japa Yuktaihi Shiva Smarana Bana Ganaira Mohai Nirjitya Kilbishari Poon Vijay Sudhin Rahat 
सानंदमावहति सुस्थिर राजलक्ष्मी आरूढ़ भक्ति गुण कुंचित भाव चाप युक्त Here, it is Vasanta Tilaka Chandas with 14 syllables. Sudhindra, the sensible one, one who is Paramayogi. Su, Sudhi, Indra, one who has perfect control over his intellect. Paramayogi, Sudhindra. Aroodha Bhakti in him, Aroodha Bhakti Guna. Guna means the string of the bow. Bhakti is the string of the bow, which is Bhava Chapa. The bow is Bhava, that is mind. Mind is the bow. And the string of the bow is bhakti. And it is arudha. It is already mounted. With what? Shiva smarana bana ganaihi amoghai. Great, highly powerful amoghai. Amogha. Super. Strong Bana, which is Shiva Smarana, the contemplation on Shiva, remembering Shiva, thinking of Shiva, number of thoughts on Shiva, Shiva Smarana, all these things are the Amogha Bana. It is not one bana, bana gana. Gana means the group, the bunch of arrows, which are different thoughts on Shiva, contemplation on Shiva, Shiva smarana. Nirjitya kilpisha ripun vijayi. And when it is Shot that arrow which is Amogha Shivasmarana, it will never be wasted because it will hit the goal which is Brahman. Even if it goes here or here or here or here, it is doing its work by Nirjitya Kilbisha Ripun. It takes away the kilbisha, that is the impurities in the jivatma, in the seeker. So that bana which is directed towards the self, parama atma, parameshwara, that shiva smarana, the contemplation on shiva is the arrow. The chapa, the bow is the mind. The very challenge of shooting an arrow to a hunter or the bowman, the challenge starts from stringing that bow. The bow will be a stick. It could be very strong, tough, and even rough, which is bendable with great effort. So, tying the string to that straight stick and make it bend in the form of bow. From there it starts. So, this bow the mind is such a thing that it is very strong 
stubborn and also it is very feeble it can bend any way so it is not giving any support as such it's very tough a stick can be bent with little effort towards bending it through pulling it and tying it but this mind is very stubborn tough to bend also it is so flexible chanchala that it is not possible to tie it tight so what is the best string one can use it is bhakti bhakti has that capacity in it because it is love passion focus faith and surrender these are all connected with bhakti just think about it bhakti is very closely connected with faith love passion and uh, surrender and focus because of all these accessories it has bhakti it is capable of handling the mind as bow in saundarya hari the hari also we are studying about it bhakti modulates disciplines bends the mind according to the need of the time in that seeker and then when it is mounted that means what the bow is there the string is bhakti and the arrow shiva smarana is kept and it is drawn that is when it is set mounted ready to shoot so it is really with so much of tension and this is the last peak of bhakti one will be feeling experiencing that is the last connection between the mind the supreme state of bhakti and that shiva smarana contemplation just imagine that moment the minute it is left the arrow has already shot the goal so that goal is nowhere but within so everything is happening within everything is happening within aarudha bhakti guna kunchita bhava chapa yuktaihi shiva smarana bana ganai ramoghai nirjitya kilpisha ripun so when that shiva smarana the contemplation on shiva as arrow with so much of focus surrender faith and love when it is moving it is taking away so much of kilbisha the impurities in the seeker's mind that cleansing is also happening along with reaching the point it is so true even for toddlers like us even even we can feel it when we have that bhakti towards shiva shakti isn't it nirjitya nirjitya means winning over nirjitya kilbisharipun vijayi he becomes the victorious who is that sudindra and he reaches the goal the arrow 
of Shiva Smarana, the contemplation, reaches the point. Where is that? Sanandam. That bliss. Susthira. Stable. Firm. Raja Lakshmi. That is Brahman. The moksha. The ultimate. Where is it? That Brahman. That as platform or even the goal. That Raja Lakshmi who is Susthira. And Sananda. It is blissful. Brahman. That is the target. That is the goal. Which is very much within. So visualize this. The mind is controlled, bent, disciplined by bhakti. And shooting the arrow, which is Shiva Smarana, the contemplation of Shiva. When that arrow is shot, it is cleansing the seeker and it is hitting the target, which is oozing with bliss. And it is Susthira Raja Lakshmi, which is also within. Dhyananjanena Samavikshyatamha Pradesham Bhitva Mahabali Bhirishwara Nama Mantrahi Divyashitam Bhujagabhushana Mudvahinti Ye Padapad Mamiha Te Shiva Te Kritartha So it was bow and the arrow in the previous one. Where the Sudhindra is taking from physical body level to the mental body and then piercing through that karna sharira, causal body and getting into that Raja Lakshmi, which is Susthira and Sananda. Now he's telling Pada Padmam Iha Te Shiva your Pada Padma, the lotus like feet, which are very much hidden within, it is there in the box. One who is able to bring it up is Kritartha. He is the real realized person. What is so great about it? Dhyananjanena samavekshya. Dhyananjana. Anjana means it is a magical or mystical ointment. Anjana, when they put it to the eyes, they get the power to see far off things. That too clearly. So in Kannada we say, when someone is searching for something and he's not finding it and he's wasting time, then we say, Kandi Gonchur Anjana Hakon Burkadre Sikke Sigate. If you put Anjana to your eyes and search for it, you will get it. Come on. 
search properly. So, it is a very old scientific method, I would say, which they used to use to find the treasure, to find the treasure. Where is the treasure? To search that, they would use anjana, that mystical ointment. Dhyananjana, here Shankaracharya is saying, by applying dhyana, contemplation, meditation as that ointment, anjana, samavekshya, seeing very clearly because of that contemplation and meditation, it is acting as the anjana because of which one can clearly see. Tamaviksha, tamaha pradesham bhitva. And because of that, one will be able to pierce through tamaha pradesha, the dark place, which is ignorance which has covered the treasure. Tamaha Pradesham Bhitva, piercing through the darkness, the place of darkness. Mahabalibhir Ishwara Nama Mantraihi. By offering the great offer, Bali, as Ishwara Nama Mantra. By offering the repetition of the Shiva Nama, Ishwara Nama Mantra, we are appeasing all the more. Divya Shritam, and which is resorted by all Devatas as well, all Devas resort to that treasure. Bhujaga Bhushanam and that treasure is decorated by the snake. Bhujaga. Bhujaga means the snake. Udvahanti. They bring it up. The treasure box. They bring it up. Which is the treasure box? Box. It is Pada Padmam Ihate Shiva. It is your Pada Padma, which is the treasure. It is hidden in the black, dark place of ignorance because it has veil, like a thick wall. So it is very much within the treasure, but it is covered by the thick darkness, Tamha Pradesha. So, Dhyananjana, by applying that anjana, ointment of dhyana. I am seeing the treasure house by piercing through that darkness. And Mahabali, Mahabali bhi Ishwara Nama Mantrai. And I am appeasing the devata for me to make way to reach that treasure box. So, this Nama Mantra is helping me, giving me the strength to pierce through that Tamah Pradesha. After that, when I see the box, the treasure, it is again wound by bhujaga as though it is like the ornament. Here, Shankaracharya is referring to the olden days. The kings used to keep all their treasure in a heavy box, metal box and they would dig into the earth and 
they would lock it with nagabandha nagabandha means it is the through the mantra it is like a modern day a number lock only when you come to the right number combination you can open the lock like that they used to close the whole box the treasure box with the mantra of nagabandha so only the king would know that mantra and he would open the treasure box when he brings it up and the treasure box will not be just carried anyhow and anyway no it has to be given the value so for that mahabali one has to give great offer what is that it is ishwara nama mantra so while telling the ishwara nama mantra they would have closed it and secure it with nagabandha mantra so nag nag bhujag bhushanam udvahanti so and then once they bring it up udvahanti means to bring it up then they open it with the proper procedure with uh, discipline and divinity and they use it like that here the treasure is so divine it is shiva pad pad padma and it is kept in the tamah pradesha which is ignorance for me to pierce through that pradesha like digging the earth i had to dig through that ignorance which is dark tamah pradesha for that i use the mantra and also nagabandha that is shakti shakti which we see it in temples also on the shivalinga there will be beautiful decorative snake around that linga and then it it comes on top that snake also represents shakti by praying shakti i am able to open the way to go directly to shiva and then i bring that shiva who is so deep within to the surface level udvahanti that means i bring him to the awareness level so that i can be feeling experiencing the shiva in my daily life or when i am jagrut when my thoughts are there so that shiva comes to the surface that means i become shiva maya body and the mind will be reverberating with shiva 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 isn't it so beautiful by the way i wanted to tell you the story regarding the uh, uh, bow and the uh, stringing the bow in kamba ramayana rama when he is tying the string to the bow making a huge sound the bow breaks and sita did not want to lose rama to be her husband and she gets frightened that my father janaka had put the rule that one should be able to tie the string to the bow but this rama has broken the bow so maybe 
he will not allow me to get married to him because of his action of breaking the bow so even before anyone can say anything she runs and puts the garland around rama so when i was uh, contemplating on that shloka the previous shloka this story came to me and it, it is such a delicate emotion which sita would have gone through of course it is kamba ramayana kambar's imagination which is so beautiful and only a woman can feel it but he has brought it up expressed it so beautifully so i wanted to share with you i which i forgot then so coming back to the next one dhyananjanena samavekshya tamah pradesham bitva महाबलिश्वर नाम मंत्रे दिव्याश्रित भुजग भूषण उद्वहति सो दिव्याश्रित ईवन देवतासो गो डाउन टू शिव दे नीड हिम बिकॉज ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ द होल मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड ही इज द वन हू इज गिविंग एनर्जी as activated consciousness to all devatas to handle their responsibilities so divya shritam it is a divine refuge which is serving all devatas as the well. <clears throat> mm. भूतारताक्षयादारकलिमुक्ति महौषधीना पादारविंद भजनम This is also beautiful. Bhūdārata is the wild boar. Varaha, the wild boar. And Shri Bhūdāra, Dāra means Patni, the wife. Vishnu has two patnis, Shri Devi and Bhu Devi. So Shri Bhu Dara, one who has two wives, which are who are Shri Devi and Bhu Devi. Bhu Dara Tam Udavahat, and he took the form of wild boar, Varah. He incarnated as वराह स्वामी यदपेक्षया इन द होप ऑफ गेटिंग व्हाट और इन द होप ऑफ गेटिंग दैट दैट इज शिवास पाद सो विष्णु took the form of varaha he dug the earth twice wearing that bhudara bhudarata or the wild boar varaha swami incarnation how and why once to bring up bhu devi from the patala to rescue the earth bhu devi another time to um find the father of shiva when he took the form as the beam of light to see adi vishnu dug as bore and went down to see the father of shiva and brahma 
took the form of bird and flew high up to see the anta. So here, what he is telling, referring to is, Bhu daratam udavahat yat apekshaya shri bhu darat yeva kimatha sumate labhaswa. What else is they other than seeking that which Vishnu, who has two wives, Sri Devi and Bhudevi, took the form of the wild boar and searched for that. Other than that, that means Shiva Pada. Kimata, O Sumate, Labhaswa. What else is they to attain other than this Shiva Pada? What is so great about Shiva Pada? He is telling again Kedara Makalitam Mukti Mahoshadhinam Padara Vinda Bhajanam Parameshwarasya. That Parameshwaras. Padaravinda bhajana. Padaravinda is the lotus feet. Bhajanam. Bhajanam means part taking, attaining, receiving, enjoying, experiencing, taking in is bhajana. How can we do that bhajana? By Constantly contemplating on it, constantly reciting on that Padaravinda Bhajana. So that is how Bhajana Bhajani came into existence. Bhajana means during reciting the Bhajanas or singing the Bhajanas, one has to experience, feel, enjoy. Entertain the whole Anthakkarana with what we are singing. Only then we are partaking, sharing, taking in Shiva or Shiva Padaravinda. But if the mind is not connected with what the words are coming out, it is not bhajana. Not at all. It is just singing which will just go on. So, Padaravinda Bhajanam. When we get connected with Padaravinda and enjoy perceiving it, enjoy experiencing it, sharing the joy of being one with Padaravinda Bhajanam, that is like Kedara. Kedara means a field, fertile field, which is giving rise to the Mahaushadi, the greatest medicine, medicinal herb, which is Mukti. So what does it mean? Padara Vinda Bhajana, just Sharing, enjoying, partaking through contemplating, reciting, singing, Padara Vinda Bhajana. It serves as the fertile field which is giving rise to Akalita Mahaushadi. Akalita means it has already taken good form, it is well examined, well perceived. It is ready, it is ripened. That kind of very strong Mahaushadi, great medicine. What is that medicine? It is Mukti. Mukti Mahaushadi Nam Kedaram, which is Akalita. Well formed, well developed. Akalita Mukti. Akalita Mukti as Mahaushadi, this 
Kedara field is giving rise to that Padara Vinda Bhajana. It is that Padara Vinda Bhajana. So, if Padara Vinda Bhajana itself is giving me that Mahaushadi Mukti, what else is there? Eva Kimatha Sumate Labhaswa. What else is there to attain? Even to see that Padaravinda, Vishnu, who had two wives as Sri Devi and Bo Devi, took the form of Varaha and he sought after seeking that uh, Pada of Shiva. So, what else is there? Seek it, which is very much within. So, this is also very encouraging, very, very positive shloka, which we all have to follow, visualize, feel it, and experience it, and hang on to it. That is when we get the full benefit of Shivananda. Narari. Asha Pashat Klesh Durvasanadi Vedo Yuktai Divya Ganthai Ramandai Asha Shati Kasya Padaravindam Chaitha Petim Vasitam Vedanotu Asha Pasha Klesha Durvasanadi. The seeker is feeling as Jivatma. Durvasanadi. All the bad smell. It is filled with bad smell. Of what? Desire. Asha. Pasha. Which is? Asha, Pasha, Klesha. Asha is the desire. Pasha is the tight nose. Which is giving rise to the Klesha, the sorrow, pain. And that is becoming Durvasa. Durvasa Nadi Bhedo Dyuktaihi taking away, piercing it through or destroying it. Divya Gandaihi Amandaihi by intense lots of Divya Gandha through the good fragrance. Asha Shati Kasya Padara Vindam Padara Vinda of the lotus feet of Asha Shati Kasya here, Asha means the directions. Shatika means the garment or the cloth. So it is Shiva who is wearing the direction as his garment. So Shankaracharya has played with the word Asha. How that Asha in a Jivatma is giving Durvasana. That Asha, the direction, because he is wearing that itself as the garment. That means his Digambara. Dik means the directions. Ambara means the cloth. Digambara. Asha Shati Kasya Padara Vindam Chetah Petim My mind, which is like a box with so many memories and vasanas, which are all kept in subconscious level. They are all suppressed. And all the vasanas and all the desires which are collecting are making so many knots, pasha, 
and they are becoming decayed and giving rise to so many durvasana vasana here the deeply etched thoughts the desires deeply etched desires which are boxed in the mind so it is giving the bad smell let amandaihi means great lots of intense divya gandha divine fragrance of padaravind of that digambara fill so that it will become good suvasana durvasana will become suvasana because of divya gandha the great fragrance of padaravind the feet which are like aravind the lotus so it is the lotus feet which are having divya gandha like that fill my whole mind which is like a box filled with asha pasha klesha durvasana cheta petim vasitam vasitam means let that fragrance me tanavatu let it get in seep in into the mind so what can we understand in this in uh, bhagavad gita dhyayato vishayan pumsa sangasteshu pajayate sangat sanjayate kama kama krodho vijayate krodho bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibhramah smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati so this is the steps it is like the a uh, downfall of a jeevatma or a human being how how we get stuck in the samsara as jeevatma is described in uh, bhagavad gita when there is contact with the objects the thought keeps going on it and then slowly it creates the desire and that desire becomes attachment kama and then greed that greed gives rise to krodha anger and then krodha utpati sammoha that delusion comes with delusion deluded mind will not be able to think properly smriti the memory is also gone when the memory is gone buddhi is also destroyed when buddhi is also destroyed totally it is nothing but total downfall of destruction of a human being so it is the downfall of human being how it happens asha pasha klesha durvasana adi so this klesha it comes in five uh, types avidya because of ignorance asmita the feeling that i am i exist the false i keeps saying i exist it is i that is asmita raga extreme worldly attachment worldly attachment dvesha extreme hatredness towards someone or something so getting deeply immersed in duality raga and dvesha and then abhinivesha tuning the mind towards all deeds which are not at all beneficial for his own self not to the people are not to the world 
So in all these five ways, Klesha brings in the bad vibrations to oneself and also to the whole environment. So this type of mind is like a closed box emitting Durvasana and it is filled with the desires which are not positive towards living in the world, not going beyond. That can be handled only by strongly injecting Divya Gandha, the fragrance, all positive thoughts, positive, positive, positive thoughts and actions will slowly take away the Durvasana, isn't it? So what is that perfume or what is that Suvasana? It is constant remembrance of Shiva Padaravinda. So when that Padaravinda of Shiva fills the Anthakarana, the surface mind, which is interacting with the objects, will not get affected by the objects because the surface level mind, which is active in the world, when it is filled with the Padaravinda, these things will not attract, will not attract him easily. Even if attracted, he will know how to stop it. So that is the beauty. So I am emitting Suvasana. And uh, if you look at it, if you have that Durvasana, inevitably, we have the examples of people who have overcome that. For that, there is uh, Nal Nudi also. Mm. Don't ask the Rushi Mula, Nadi Mula, Nari Mula. What does it mean? Mula means the source. Don't ever question the source of a rushi or the source of a river or the source of a woman because all these three can very easily get over the past and be in the present in a very productive way. For example, Rushi, Valmiki, he was a bandit, but how he changed his contribution, Ramayana is eternal. So do we pay attention to the past of Valmiki? No, we give reverence to Valmiki who has given the world Ramayana. So we should not see the Mula, the source of the Trushi, Valmiki. Nadi. If you see uh, the Ugamasthana, the birthplace of Narmada River, which is very grand and gorgeous, within few kilometers of her birthplace, she's very gorgeous very deep and strong current, everything. But when you see the birthplace of that river, you will never believe that such a small uh, spring can give rise to such a big, huge Narmada lifeline. So there's no comparison between the birthplace of Narmada and what she is within few kilometers. 
in the same way nari amrapali and also jabali jabala is the woman who gave birth to satyakama who became such a great rushi so their past life was not good but what they turned out as is highly appreciable and one one feels a like giving reverence to them so like that every jeevatma even though we have the durvasana because of asha pasha klesha within the mind it can be cleared it can be cleansed it can be made into divya gandha by constantly being in touch with padaravinda of shiva so it is a very great hope for everyone at any stage of life or any level of life one can turn towards shiva and become the great person with divya gandha emitting divya gandha in life so how to bring it into practice when we get angry shiva shiva if we say it once or oh, shiva and show the anger by the time we say shiva the mind would have gone little towards shiva and it controls the anger or when we, we are very very sad then oh shiva uttering the word shiva belongs to somewhat soothes or when we get attracted wow i love this i want this shiva i want this shiva uncontrollable attraction towards some object when i really want it if i say the word i want it shiva i love it a lot that means i'm telling the mind that i don't have the uh authority to buy it it is shiva i want it shiva so it is like i'm asking shiva i want it so in that way we can bring in shiva into our life in so many ways and we should bring it that is when it is easy to bring that divya gandha to our life so this is what i understood from this uh, shloka mm. कल्याणिनं सर्वचित्रगतिं सवेगं सर्वेंगितज्ञमनघं ध्रुवलक्षणाढ्यं चेतस्तुरंगमधिरुह्य चरस्मरारे नेथस्समस्तजगतां वृषभाधिरूढ so here the seeker is feeling kalyaninam sarasa chitra gatim savegam sarvengita gnyam anagham dhruva lakshanadhyam chetat turag turanga adiruhya char smarare o smarare smarare is shiva smara ari the enemy of kamadeva smarare netha samasta jagatam the leader or the lord of samasta jagatam to the whole manifested world 
It will have so many universes, planets, everything is included. And he is the leader for that. That's great. Prishabhadi Rodha. One who has used Vrishabha, Nandi, Bull as his vehicle. Oh, Shiva, that person. Please, Chethas Turanga. My mind is like the horse. Adirushya, you get on to that Turanga, which is my mind, Chetaha. Chara, you go wherever you want because this horse, my mind, is Kalyaninam. It is very auspicious. It has all auspicious traits within. Sarasa Chitra Gatim and its movement is sarasa, enjoyable. It is very entertaining because this Turanga is very unique, Vichitra. Savegam, as well, it goes very fast. Mind, can anyone question it? It goes very fast, too fast. Sarvengitagyam, and it knows all the desirable things. Anagham, and it is sinless. Dhruvalakshanadhyam. And it has the good understanding about the goal, the destination. It knows very well. So it will not take you to different place by mistake, but it knows where to go. So it will take you to the destination properly. Dhruva Lakshanadhyam. So these are all the good qualities of this Turanga, my mind, Chetaha. So please, Adirushya, get on to this as your vehicle. And Chara, you go because you are the Smarare. Here, Smarare has two meanings. Smara is one who is Kamadeva, enemy of that Smara. That means all worldly things are not in the taste of Shiva who is pure consciousness. He always sees Kama as his enemy. That is one meaning. Smara also means memory. What is memory? Memory is connected with this world, Smara. For that, he is enemy. That means what? Memory is the one which is making me build up the desires, vasana, karma. Everything is depending on what I am using as memory. Smara. But it is against the spiritual enlightenment. For that, I need only consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. Smarare, who is pure consciousness. Even the realized persons, they don't stick to the memory, they live the consciousness. Avadutas. So their world is always blissful. Present, present, present. And they won't give attachment to the memory. Smarare. Shiva, the consciousness. Nethas samasta jagatam. When he is the leader, being consciousness, he is all pervading and all penetrating, Sarvavyapi and Antaryami as well. Where will he need to go? Everything is within him. 
as the second circle and he is the third circle neetha samasta jagatam so is there need for him to move around no does he need the vega like the mind is uh, can move so fast with great speed is no need sarasa chitra gatim and also it it moves around gives the entertainment it because it is the mind it keeps gives uh, keeps giving the entertainment throughout the journey is there need and kalyaninam and it is auspicious because it has good traits because it is well disciplined by shiva being the rider and he is vrishabhadi rudha shiva is using vrishabha nandi as the vehicle who is that vrishabha who is dharmic in nature who is highly disciplined and who who surrenders to the good traits so he makes that rishabha as his vehicle to rule the whole universe as neta so what here it means is firstly he wanted to be that moon can i not be the uh, ornament on your head the sikanas now okay if that is not the thing at least you sit on my mind which is like the turanga you make me your vehicle so it is a way of making connection with shiva if shiva is the rider on my mind imagine how the life would be it will be filled with nothing but bliss and the consciousness being the main thing in my life the duality will become merged and without the duality i will be above the world feeling because the rider on me is shiva all the time so i want the shiva to control the mind which is sarasa chitra gati there is no need i want shiva to control savegam the mind runs anywhere in everywhere that also he will be able to control being the rider sarvengitajnam and all the desirable things which i see as a jivatma i am telling shiva i know what are all the things desirable so i will stop at that points i will not miss out or i will have to bring you back i won't do that because i have good knowledge about all the desires ingita i will stop it the proper places so that you can enjoy that means what it is the mind which is drawing shiva to the worldly pleasures but actually the rider shiva will have the hold on the mind which is going after serving gita yam anakam but it is seamless which is understandable dhruva lakshana adhyam and the seeker even though he has all these qualities in the mind he knows what the lakshya the goal is so shiva you be the rider all the time in my mind
शिव शक्ति शिव शक्ति शिव शक्ति ओ 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 